Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about sorting, and this will be a really quick video. So there are essentially two ways to sort things in NumPy. So I've already made an array here, which is essentially the one we've been using previously, except that I've shuffled the elements a bit and repeated 15 twice so that it's not sorted. So there are two ways to sort things in NumPy, and I think it's actually a bit important to grasp the difference between these two methods. So the first one, let me just write it as a comment, this is to take an array and then use the method sort on it. This is a method for in-place sorting. That means that when I apply it to my array, it will be sorted in place. So it will not return a new array that it sorted, it will simply modify my original array as is, so I'll lose the original information. This might be what you want or not, depending on the context. So to do that, it's pretty simple, you just call array.sort and that's it. So a common mistake in the beginning is to think that, oh, I should probably sort it, that's fine. So now I should return it in some way, I call it like sorted array, something like this. So this is not what you should do, and it will be clear if I print this. Here we can see that it's none. The reason for this is that the sort method modifies in place, so it doesn't return anything. And not returning anything in Python is the same as returning none value, so this will just be assigned none. It's kind of a general design principle in Python that if a method modifies the original array, then it will not return anything. So you don't need to do any of that, and just remove that. Now the original array is sorted, so you can just print. You can see now that the original array has been sorted. So there is also a second way. If we're doing the second way, let me just copy this one because again, the original array has been modified and I want to illustrate this on a non-sorted array. So here we have it again. Now the array is again not sorted. And the second way to sort something is to use the np.sort function. This is a function for returning a sorted array. So this does not sort in place, so it doesn't modify the original array, it creates a new array that is sorted. So to do this we did what was wrong previously and just do sorted array and set this to np.sort array. Now if you print sorted array, here you can see that it's also sorted. So let me indicate here that this is the sorted array but I can also now print out the original one. Like this, and you can see now that the original one has not been changed. So this is not sorted, but we have a sorted array as well. So it really depends on what you want. If you want to sort in place, then use the sort method. If you want to sort not in place, but return a new array that is sorted, then you can use np.sort. A final interesting tidbit is that you can actually specify the specific sorting method here as an optional argument. So what you can do is to specify kind. I think that NumPy accepts among four or five of the common sorting methods. So one you could do, for instance, is heap sort like this, you can't really tell a difference, but there is a difference in speed in these methods. I don't want to go into this at all really here because this is more of a special tidbit, but if you know about sorting methods, then you can specify your own here, so that's pretty convenient. If you're a beginner, then I would just recommend to do the default one, namely don't specify anything, and I think the default one is quick sort. but if you want to really squeeze out that extra performance, then this can be really useful. So this is all I wanted to say about sorting in NumPy. It's pretty straightforward, but you just need to keep track of what array.sort or np.sort, what is really the difference here. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Hi! In this video I'm going to talk about copies and views and what they are in NumPy. I think this is best explained by looking at the concrete example. So let's kind of recap the example of reversing an array. So let's make our trusted array. Just going to use the np array method. Like this. And recall that we could reverse the array by using the slicing syntax like this. Let me just call this reverse array. So far this is fine, I can also just print this out so that you can see it and it's been reversed. Now the interesting thing is what happens if I try to modify the reverse. So let's say that I take the element at the zeroth position and set this equal to a thousand. Then I can print out the modified version and have it here. But you can also now see that if I look at the original, let me print out that as well, 
Something kind of strange has happened if you're not used to this already. The original has also been changed. So you can see here that at the original we have a thousand here at the last entry, which corresponds to reverse array's entry at position zero. So the important thing is that this has also changed. So we would say that doing a slicing here to reverse the array is creating a view. This is the terminology that NumPy uses. This means that modifications on the slice also affects the original array. The reason for NumPy doing this is that it's really, really efficient computationally. So when you're creating a slice, you're essentially just viewing the information in a different way, and then modifications to the new one also affects the previous one. So this is what we mean when we say that slicing create views. But in NumPy, there is also copies. So say again that I have an array, and let's say that this time it has minus four here, and otherwise the same usual numbers I've used, 15, 16, 23, 42. Then there is a function called abs, which is an abbreviation for absolute value, essentially turning all the negative numbers positive. Let me call this positive array. This is np.abs. You can pass in the array. And now, if I look at positive array, you can see that it's become positive. So let me just make the headline here, make array positive. Now we can do the whole same thing here where we can start to modify it. So we can take our positive array and at zero, just assign it the value thousand as before. And now we can again print the kind of modified one, the one we get from making the elements positive and we can print the original one. But now something different has happened. The original one has not been changed. You can see in the modified version that the absolute value one has changed, but the original one has not changed. So this is different behavior from slicing. In slicing, the modification affected the original one because it was a view, but for the absolute value function, it does not affect the original one because this is a copy. It's always a good idea if you're dealing with a NumPy construct to check whether it makes a copy or a view. If it makes a copy, then you can safely modify the new one without it affecting the previous one. However, if it creates a view like slicing does, then you should only modify the new one if you want the original one to be modified as well. So in a much later video, we'll talk about some of the internal structures in NumPy, namely strides, and see actually that it makes sense that slicing will return a view while the absolute value will return a copy. For now, it's just good to keep in mind that some methods return copies, while other methods or constructs like slicing returns views. In the next video, we'll talk about aggregate functions like summing and taking averages and so on, and how we can do this very efficiently and smoothly in NumPy. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Hi, and welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about aggregate functions. So aggregate function is a function applied to an array that essentially aggregates the numbers or combines them to create a single number. To motivate this, let's say we have an array. It's the same array I've used previously. Now say we want to take the sum. So just a side note, in Python you can use a dir function to check out an object. Let me do that and let me also just print this. And here you can see all the methods that the object has. There are quite a lot of them, and we'll go through a lot of the ones that are down here during the course. Additionally, if you know about object-oriented programming in Python, then you'll know that you can use a for loop on an object and iterate through it if it has the iter method, and it does. So arrays are iterable objects. That means that we can use for loops on them. So let me just comment this out to get some space. And now we can write a for loop. Let's initiate a sum to be equal to zero. This is not good because sum means something specific in Python. So let's just call this sum of array. Let's set it to be equal to zero. And then for each number in my array, this should work fine. I'll take the sum of array thing I made and add to it the number. And finally, I can print out the sum of the array. And it becomes 108. And this is perfectly valid, it's just not very optimal. In NumPy, we prefer to write as few for loops as possible. It's much preferred to use the built-in NumPy methods than using explicit for loops. This is mainly because it's shorter, but also because they're a lot more optimized than the usual for loops in Python. So instead of doing all of this, so let's find the sum 
again, we can make some kind of variable for it, or sum of array, and we can use the numpy's function just called sum, takes in our array, and this is everything we need to do. So again, let's just print it out. We again get 108, and this is a lot shorter. Let me just make this a bit more clear. And there is a bunch of other methods like this. So notice that this is an aggregate function in the sense that it takes in a whole array and then aggregates or combines the number to make a single number, namely the sum. You can do this for a lot of functions, so I'll just mention a few of them. One very common one is the mean, which is also called the average. So let's again do exactly the same. This is np.mean. So this gives us the average. And you can see here that the average is 18. Since the sum function only involves plussing integers, it will give out an integer like here, but the mean essentially needs to divide by the length of the array, so this will automatically convert it into a floating point number. It's not really that important, it's just nice to keep in mind. We can also take the product of an array, and here it's prod as an abbreviation for product, and it works exactly the same way product So you can see here quite clearly that if you know one aggregate function and you kind of know how to use all of them It's just a question of knowing that they exist So I just want to show you two more This is finding the maximum and the minimum in an array and this is let me just do it directly So here we have the max one And this is given by np.max of an array so you can see that the maximum number in this thing is 42. It seems right. Then we also have np.min. Gives us the minimum, which in this case is 4. Additionally to knowing what the max and min values are, it's usually very important to know the index where it takes place. So this is the argmax and also the argmin function. And they work more or less exactly the same. So here is the argmax, and this is the argmin. So you can see that the argmax is 5, this is because if we scroll up a bit, then 42, which is the biggest number, has index 5, and the argmin, we can see here, is 0, that's because the minimum number is 4 and it has position 0. In the next lecture, we'll work with a bigger exercise regarding temperature data. In that case, the maximum might indicate the highest temperature, minimum might indicate the lowest one, but argmax and argmin might indicate, say, the day or month or year where this takes place, depending on how your data is. So argmax and argmin is usually very, very important. So this is what I wanted to say about aggregate functions in NumPy. They make your code really short and really slick, and it's really easy to use. So I really hope you like them, and we'll see you again in the next video.